What's going on, everybody? Hope you're having a wonderful week so far. A lot of crazy shit going on with AMC. A little bit of a different video. I created a, a tweet kind of breaking down total return swaps. Got some traction, so I wanted to do something similar for YouTube. Bottom line is, I think the majority of us know what total return swaps or TRSs are. Um, that's how Archegos and Bill Huang like imploded their company. I just wanted to give a breakdown of a more simple uh, explanation of what those are and give you uh, the idea that this is much bigger than Archegos, right? There's a lot of funds that are in ISDA that could be doing something on a much larger scale. And I'll explain kind of how there's a little bit of lack of transparency there as well, right? A uh, few basic things. Number one, these total re return swaps are done and can be manipulated through ISDA contracts. And as a reference point, we're going to use the Archegos um, case, which obviously, you know, made a lot, bunch of headlines a few years ago um, as the example. The first thing that we need to do, though, is really understand and talk about what total return swaps are. In the most simple terms, a total return swap is just a contract, a financial contract between two parties. So it's bilateral, party A, party B, where one party agrees to pay the other the total return of an asset. So in this case, we'll use AMC as the asset. So it means that the receiving party gets the income generated by the asset as well as any capital gains, while the party that's paying gets a fixed floating rate. So they're getting a set rate every you know month or whatever the maturity of the, whatever they decide in their contract, right? So one party is getting the gains and losses to an asset that, that somebody's swapping on, and then the other person in exchange is getting a flat payment for that deal, right? Every month, it doesn't matter what that security, that basket of securities, or if it's a single equity, it doesn't matter what it's doing, it's gonna get that flat rate, all right? And so, just to give you another example, say you have party A and you have party B. Party A owns AMC stock that's generating a decent amount of income, right? And party B wants to benefit from that income, but they don't want to actually buy the stock. This is where you would enter into a total return swap. So party B receives the income and capital gains from the stock. Party A receives the fixed floating rate payment based off of what are the, the interest rates are. I mean, it's bilateral, so they can really choose a few different ways and what that payment's gonna be. Now, how does that connect to ISDA? Well, ISDA is basically the standard for this, the contract that we made to, to make this happen, right? They are the big boys when it comes to derivatives and they would be the one that, this would be the contract that you'd be using to facilitate or to build out the structure, the legal terms of this deal. And obviously that includes total return swaps, um, interest rate swaps, credit default swaps. But in this particular case, we're talking about total return swaps specifically with equities. Um, the contracts is the helps. I mean, it really does make the process a little bit easier, um, but it leaves a lot of things up to interpretation. So when you think about things like the Archegos case, um, it's a great example of how like these turtle return swaps can be manipulated because this family office, which I know that you guys have heard AMC Bigums talk about multiple times, was run by Bill Huang. They had billions of dollars in positions all of it was through total return swaps. So they were able to take on from those swaps, they were able to present that they had value in securities they didn't actually own, were able to use those as collateral across multiple different banks, and they took on massive amounts of leverage. And all of this, because total return swaps don't have the same sort of disclosure rules when it comes to being reported on the books, this was for the most part, hidden from, from public view. There was no, th nobody really knew that this was going on. And they were able to gain exposure. They were able to gain exposure to several stocks without actually owning them. It wasn't just AMC, it wasn't just GameStop. They were doing this on a mass scale. When the value of these stocks that they were in, depending on whatever position they were in, right? Whatever, however they use it. So if they were taking the total return swap, betting against it, for example, using it as like, hey, I have, I have exposure to these stocks. I wanna short it, I wanna bet against it, X, Y, or Z. When the trade went the opposite way of they were anticipating, um, 
or if something spiked or dropped dramatically, they couldn't meet the margin calls, the margin calls, which is what happened. That's how the Arceos blew up. It resulted in massive losses for several banks that extended credit to them because they went and they took the 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 security position from those total return swaps, okay, um, and basically used it as collateral to get leverage across multiple different banks. So it's 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 really, in a sense, it's kind of like. I, he's a scumbag, but it's like, man, I kind of appreciate in a way that he he realized what the system was and he took advantage of it. Obviously, uh, didn't work out great for him. But I think that's the the way that the majority of these people that we're we're up against is like you know apes are fighting against. So you know these is the contracts. How can they be manipulated? Right? How does is the contracts allow for this to happen? In the case of Archegos. Um, they just used the return swaps to conceal their true level of, of exposure to certain stocks because, again, this is held off of their balance sheet. So it allowed them to take on much more leverage than they would have been able to otherwise. Um, and really, they do this all under the guise of, again, these ISDA contracts because they're, they're really vague. They leave a lot of terms up for um, interpretation. They're fairly ambiguous, right? And so it's important to think about when we start looking into data and we're doing DD on these different companies, doing as much as we can to find out what information we can find about on the swap data, because this is where I feel like people are making bets against certain securities without actually owning the stock. And it's a big, big deal. And it has a major cascading effect when it's happening across multiple, multiple different, you know, banks, and they're all betting on the same collateral, it's all coming from the same place. I'm not going to be surprised if we see more family offices just crumble under the same sort of pressure that Archegos did, as well as the added additional pressure of collateral management that's having to happen from phase six. These guys that are basically doing, you know, clear, you know, derivatives right now are probably struggling and I think are on the edge of their seats. But in any case, sorry about the uh, Telegram notifications going off, guys. That is pretty much it. I feel like that gives you a pretty good understanding. I guess one last thing I could do real quick, I could pull up, because this was a great example that we have on Twitter too. I gave you guys on YouTube a little bit more of a, uh, an advanced breakdown. But for what I did post on Twitter, which is a, kind of an interesting thing too, I think that you can use this as, a, uh, as an example to share with your friends, right? But, and I'll just, I'm just gonna read this. So total re return swaps are like lending your bike to someone for a certain period of time. In return, they pay you a fee and you also receive any gains or losses they make during that time. In finance, TRS agreements were one party swaps or returns both income and capital gains of an asset with another party for a fixed floating rate. Okay, so we understood that from the beginning part of this video, but this is a part that I really wanna drive home. Now imagine the person you lent your bike to starts entering races, winning prize money, and not telling you about it. They may even make modifications to the bike that affect its value, right? This is where things can get manipulative. Some people might use TRS or total return swaps to hide their actual exposure to certain assets or engage in risky trades without revealing it to regulators or investors. Anyways, hope this is, gives you guys a great understanding. I'm trying to stick to factual stuff that we can use to learn, to educate, to be the best versions of ourselves that we can be. And honestly, keep the, the ball in our court and the things that we can control, the things that we can educate and keeping things fact-based. Anyways, love you long time. Talk to you soon.